Konnichiwa and welcome to the JSA Family Festival, our celebration of Keiro no Ki, or a respect for the aged day, which is the national public holiday in Japan. For the last 10 years, JSA Family Festival has honored and celebrated the seniors in our community through food, music, and art. It's a little different this year, but we're very glad that you can join us online to continue the tradition. Yesterday's festival kicked off with a variety of workshops, including daifuku mochi, origami flowers, and Japanese decoupage crafts, which are now available online via video on the JSA YouTube channel, so be sure to check them out. Today's program, which we're bringing to you, is full of reflections on the impact JSA has made in the community, how important it is to treasure our elders, and a lot of fun musical guests. To kick off our program today, we're going to bring you behind the scenes with uh, the making of yesterday's workshops and the local chefs from my friend Yuji, Casa de K, and Ox and Tiger, who prepared the delicious bentos for today. I had them, honto ni oishikatta. Thank you for that. And we'll also pay tribute to all of the amazing staff and volunteers who have kept JC running through this pandemic. But first, We'd like to hear a few words from JSA Executive Director Diane Wong and Board President Aki Nakao. Hi, I'm Diane Wong, Executive Director for JSA. Thanks to all of you for joining us for our two-day celebration of our family festival. A big thank you goes out to Jill Shiraki, our education coordinator, who together with her committee put together such a wonderful and interactive event. Thanks to all of you. We wanted to introduce you to our great board president, Aki Nakao. Aki, I wanted to ask you, in celebrating Keiro no Hi, is there any special saying or practice, cultural teaching that your elders passed on to you that you wanted to share with us today? Yeah, Diane, um, as far as uh, uh, cultural training and, and upbringing uh, for honoring the uh, our uh, aged and ancestors, I, I would say that the word that comes to mind is honor, uh, to show respect for the family and the family that uh, came before us. And I think a lot of the times, what I saw as, as, as I was uh, growing up was with m both of my sets of grandparents from both sides that they uh, clearly uh, demonstrated respect for their elders, even though they were, uh, you know, away in Japan. They were, they were Issei and uh, their elders were in Japan and they continually maintained contact with them and did many things for them. And particularly since uh, I was a product after the war, saw them sacrifice a lot here in order to be able to support the families that remained uh, in Japan and trying to recover from the devastations of the war. A day like today and a way to uh, honor and respect our, our elders certainly is a, a, a way to uh, celebrate uh, people who came before us. And uh, just a, a bit in closing, I'd like to, to uh, also extend my thanks and uh, respect to those that put this production on today. I know it's not traditional. It's uh, very unconventional for a number of us. And even all the, all the years that uh, I've lived, I've never seen such a situation as we're in today. But what's amazing to me is that this organization that I am privileged to lead has been uh, very good at adapting to the daily uh, or to the changes that we're having to make in order to be able to continue to provide the programming that would uh, keep our 
membership uh, active and engaged and also to provide uh, healthy meals. You know, it's really a team effort between the volunteers, the board, the staff. I mean, it really takes all of us to get through these moments together. Uh, and I know this way of celebrating Family Festival isn't ideal, and we look forward to next year when we can be together again. But meanwhile, you know, please remember we have so many classes and activities and events that, you know, you just have to check our website uh, to join in and participate and to be with us. So uh, thank you so much again for being with us for these two days and being such wonderful JSA community members. Take care.
As you can see, we owe a huge thank you or arigato to all of the JSA board, the staff, the volunteers who have done so much to make sure that JSA keeps running and continues to provide services during the pandemic. So thank you. And coming up next, oh, well, I have to add first that JSA actually delivers over or around 150 healthy lunches every day to seniors across the East Bay, which I'm told is more than double their normal delivery, which is incredible. And for those of you who are interested in helping out seniors in need uh, through the Healthy Meal Program, you're welcome to consider becoming a kitchen staff volunteer or a delivery driver. And just a few hours a week can make a huge difference in the lives of our seniors. So if you're interested, you can contact the Senior Services Manager, Tara Kawasa, by email at Tara, T-A-R-A, at j-sei.org, or visit the JSA website for more information. Coming up next, in our next segment of today's festival, we've had a chance to hear from seniors about how they've been coping with the pandemic, and also hear some special remembrances from them in honor of Keronoki. But before we get to them, we have our first musical guest of the festival, Mr. Toru Saito, our very own Japanese Bing Crosby, who is the singer and leader of the Shanghai Bar Band and has been performing since the 1970s. So he's here coming to us from Berkeley today um, with a few songs from the heart. Take it away, Toru. When it seems we stood and talked like this before We looked at each other in the same way then But I can't remember where or when The clothes you're wearing are the clothes the smile you were smiling, you were smiling then, but I can't remember where or when. Some things that happen for the first time seem to be happening again and again. Things that we have met before and laughed before and loved before, but who knows where or when? Take it, Benny. You know, my buddy Benny. So many weddings and parties we played together. So many good times. But you know, now Benny's playing from way above the clouds. And I know he's smiling down. And I know he remembers all the good times we had. And all the mm, problems. We had them too, you know. Nobody goes through life without problems, right? You know that. that happen for the first time seem to be happening again and again and though it seems that we have met before and laughed before and loved
When I'm worried and I can't sleep, I count my blessings instead of sheep, and I fall asleep counting my blessings. When my bankroll is getting small, I think of when I had none at all. Counting my blessings I think about a nursery And I picture curly heads And one by one I count them they slumber in their beds. So if you're worried and you can't sleep, why count your blessings instead of she and you fall asleep, counting your blessings. I think about a nursery and I picture curly heads and one by one I count them as they slumber in their beds so if you're Why count your blessings instead of she and you fall asleep counting your blessings. Nineteen fifty two, Cameron Chandler. Hold me, hold me, never let me go until you've told me, told me. what I want to know, and then just hold me. hold me. Make me tell you I'm in love with you. Thrill me. Down the lanes where shadows will be, will be Hiding lovers just the same as will be. will be When you make me tell you I love you They told me be sensible with your new love Don't be fooled to think this is the last you'll find But they Never stood in the dark with you, love. Oh, when you take me in your arms and drive me slowly out of my mind. Kiss me. Kiss me. And when you do, I know that you will miss me. Miss me. If we ever say you do, so kiss me. Kiss me. Make me tell you I'm in love with you. Never let me go until you've told me, told me what I want to know and then just hold me. hold me. Make me tell you I'm in love with you. 
thrill me. Walk me down the lanes where shadows will be. Pining lovers just the same as we'll be. When you make me tell you I love you. They told me, be sensible with your new love. Don't be fooled thinking this is the last you'll find. But they never stood in the dark with you, love. Oh, when you take me in your arms and drive me slowly out of my mind. Kiss me. Kiss me. And when you do, I know that you will miss me. Miss me. If we ever say adieu, so kiss me. Kiss me. Make me tell you I'm in love with you. Never, never, never let me go. Never, never, never let me go. Should there be a 
stormy sea I'll turn the tide for you and I'll never no I'll never no I'll Well, if somebody told me six months ago that we'd still be in the same position for six months, I would have really been depressed. Everybody's getting panicky and saying we need to get ready to evacuate at a moment's notice. So we're trying, trying to get everything together and I pack some things. I have um, the one bedroom full of stuff to take. And that's another layer of what doom and gloom <laughs> in addition to everything else and the politics too. Um, I just am tired of it. I think it's challenging. Well, we can't see our family. We can't see our children and our grandchildren. It's trying to deal with uh, not being able to see our, our grandson. It's our first grandkid. Mm. And we were all ready, my wife and I were all ready to be the doting grandparents whose only job was to spoil our grandkid. Mm -hmm. And since we can't see him, especially since he started uh, back in daycare, we were able to spend a month with him when before he started back because he wasn't being exposed to other kids. So mm -hmm. it was safe for us to be around him. But now my daughter's worried about him exposing us right. to the coronavirus. So first it was, of course, difficult, but I said to sort of enjoy this pause um, and of course since this spring there have been a lot of things to think about with the pandemic going and this issue of racial justice you know to the front so I appreciated having this time to sort of think and, and I thought it was good and also I really start to appreciate things I still had and things I could still do um, is there anything you think younger people can do to help you guys during this time? Well, we have some younger neighbors who have been shopping for us, and that's been a lifesaver. Uh, we really appreciate that. In the beginning, they would go to Costco or Berkeley Bowl, Safeway, whatever. It's very nice to to know that you've been thought about. And, you know... Uh, I, I consider, I still consider myself young, <laughs> although I'm not that young, but there are others that I know who are a lot older than I am. And so that's been one of the nice things about, and I'm speaking about people finding connections. You know, our average age is about 85. And um, so being able to contact them as a younger person and and I know they appreciate it uh, being um, checked in on, um, just just staying connected because it's a terrible thing to be isolated. And I appreciate this today, even Mia, that um, you know, Jace is considering considering all that, staying in contact with their elders. It makes a, a huge difference, huge difference. I think I'm proud of that aspect and, uh, you know, being able to live comfortably now. So I think that's you know, something that my dad wanted us to do because he wanted to 
he made sure that all of us kids, even my sister, all had uh, education. And uh, we're grateful for that, I think. My, my life example, or one of them, of course, was my dad. And his life was punctuated by the struggle of you know, being in Japanese America in a time when there was just overt prejudice and the, the camp experience. I'm a camp baby. I was born in Topaz. And I saw my dad always singularly focused on providing for his family and giving me the opportunities, my sister giving us the opportunities that he either wanted but couldn't take advantage of for a variety of reasons. I mean, he, he lived through the depression, he lived through camp, he lived through the uncertainty of coming out of the camps and things like that. And he always was uh, protective of me and my sister. And I think I, from that, he, being my role model, he kind of set the example for me to think about your family, provide for your family, and take advantage of the opportunities that I have kind of been able to give to you by providing you a roof over your head, food on the table, things like that, the basics. And so I, I tried to follow that example and do the same for my family during the time that uh, I, we were having a family. So in looking back at it, that's the thing that I, that I think I can say was kind of like both an individual achievement in that sense, but it was also kind of like following through and taking advantage of the opportunities and chances that were given to me by my parents' sacrifices. Well, you know, growing up in a big family, I grew up in a family of, of um, there were six brothers and sisters. And um, I think the lessons we learned from my parents uh, were that family is, gee, it's the most important thing. And, um, to maintain good relations, good relationship with with your family. Um, it's always been important for me. For um, my parents, your great grandparents, that they, you know, family was everything to them. I made the best of that negative situation and and turned it around. And other than that, I don't have any regrets because I'm. I always say I'm grateful for. You know, the fact that we had the opportunity, you know, my parents struggled. They, went, they made sure that we had enough money to eat and go to school and all that. And uh, my parents and grandparents never talked about camp. And I wish I had known sooner to ask questions. My advice is, well, when I was growing up and older, I kept thinking, when I get rich, I'll be happy. Or when I have a home, I'll be happy. Or when I get married, I'll be happy. So I'm always chasing the happiness. But I think as I've gotten older, it's being grateful for what you have. So every day, um, um, keeping or just listing, um, writing or mentally going over what you're grateful for. This period of shelter in place made me realize that the most important things are my life and my connections with people I love. And for example, that I'm very proud of the partnership with Chuck, my husband, uh, which has been going on for the past 33 years. And this union started during an earlier 
uh, worldwide epidemic, the HIV crisis. Uh, but it, at that time, when things were very difficult, people still found each other and formed these unions. And of course, there has been systemic marginalization and oppression of LGBTQ people uh, over the decades. But when you have a strong bond with another person, it makes it much easier to survive and possibly thrive during the period of difficulty. So uh, I'm really proud of the, the connections I have been able to make with other people, but particularly with this most important person in my life at this time, who is my spouse. Kindness is a huge word. And we've received so much kindness. And, um, and Mia, I'm so happy to hear you say that because that's what makes the world go round for me, you know? Being kind and being thoughtful and, and generous in, in um, thought and what, what you can do for people. I, I wish I had the understanding back then that, that one of these days I would want to know that, or I might want to know that. And I'd taken the opportunity to talk with them more about what were their views on things and you know, how did they feel about it? They're the ones who went to camp and you know, how did they survive that? But that, that's another regret I have. So because of that, I, you know, I have no memories of Japanese sayings or things repeated much in, in my house and there my my parents desire to kind of make us quote American uh, caused me to not have a great understanding or feel or exposure to any kind of Japanese sayings or anything like that so I, I really have nothing along those lines do your best, don't give up, and just plug away because you'll get there. Do whatever you can to be proud of your name. Gambate or gambare, be strong, hang in there, is, is, was important. In the end, things turn out. At the moment, maybe you think that was a terrible thing, but when I look back on the terrible things, it led to something better may not be able to see that at the time but um it does work out and also um my maternal grandmother uh lived near my school when i was going to junior high and senior high so i would often stop by and have lunch with her and in hindsight i think she was a widow and it was a woman of limited means but when i was with her she would cook my favorite dishes and we would eat and talk and laugh and she really made me feel that I'm the most important person in her life at that moment and I really felt I was lavishly entertained so those acts of kindness generosity and hospitality really had a really deep impact on me and I like to think that Chuck and I continue that tradition of hospitality. And I do believe that the sharing the table with friends is one of the most important ways that you can get connected with others and most important way for you to express your love. Uh, and food, I believe is really its bridge which connects you to your childhood to your family and to your culture and heritage and that I think is why that many JSA events have some element of sharing food and the, the term okage sama de is um, because of you I am who I am, I am where I am because of you. And that is so true because we can't live our life just, we 
are influenced and um, by so many other people, people, our friends, our family. Uh, and because of them and because of their, their uh, friendship and love and whatever they do for you, um, because of them, I am. We thank everyone for sharing their experiences and thoughts and a special thank you to Saito-san for our songbird for sharing those beautiful heartfelt tunes. I know I was swaying to side to side. That was really special. And from the interviews with our elders, it's very clear that we're all significantly impacted by those who have come before us, whether it's our grandparents, our parents, family or friends even people who have just showed us kindness along the way, you know, all of their legacies live on through us. And that kind of legacy is what we're so happy to celebrate here today with the JSA Family Festival. And we're very grateful to all of the seniors in our community who helped build this foundation of JSA. Uh, for those who don't know, JSA traces its roots back to 1971 with the East Bay Japanese for Action organization which later, which uh, helped to create events and social outings for the Issei generation. And then later, it merged with East Bay Issei Housing to create the Japanese American, Japanese American services of the East Bay, uh, which later came to be the new and improved JSEI, which exists today, which encompasses services, a wider range of services for all generations. And that's what we're really excited to celebrate and build on that legacy here today. Um, and on that note, I'm very excited to introduce our next special musical guest who is actually live with us in the JSA studio. Please welcome Ukuleni. Ukuleni. Ukuleni is an ukulele teacher and performer based in Oakland, and he is so much more than just an ukulele teacher and performer, as you'll see. Um, but he received his musical training from UC Berkeley and Cal State East Bay and actually taught music in public schools for five years. And he's going to present us with some amazing music. And, and then we'll get back to him and I as we chat a little bit more about um, what he's been doing to keep busy recently, which is a lot. He teaches lessons, private group lessons, jam sessions, and I encourage everybody to check out his YouTube channel, Ukuleni, for more videos on that. Um, so you'll get to enjoy his, his music, and I'll ask him a few questions, and uh, I'll let him take it away. Hooray for Ukuleni! Thank you so much for that wonderful introduction. You're talking me up too much. I think uh, it's going to be hard to follow that introduction, uh, but I'll do my best. Thank you, everybody, uh, JSAFE community, uh, for having me here. Thank you, Jill, for inviting me here to play, and of course, Diane, our executive director here. 
Um, I've been doing the family festival on and off for the probably the past three or four years, and it has always been a delight of mine to come out to uh, Albany, California, <laughs> to uh, to do the family festival. So I was surprised when I got the email a couple days ago. I almost went to Albany to do this performance, but luckily I am here in beautiful Emeryville. I can't believe this is the first time I've been to this office, and it's just so wonderful to be with everybody here. Uh, it's just so inspiring to to see all the work that these people have done uh, just outside um, doing the food uh, deliveries and the, and the food pickups, uh, just such amazing stuff. So I wanted to play some music. Uh, I was looking for some inspiration on uh, what to do with my set. I like to do a lot of covers and like to cover a range of music. And so I always ask myself, like, what kind of music would be appropriate? And uh, I was looking actually back to the, the beginning of Jay Say that uh, Lauren was bringing up that it started in 1971. So I was like, oh, let's go back and see what the, the chart toppers were in 1971. And amazingly enough, some of my favorite songs chart, uh, topped the charts in 1971, including this first one. We're going to take you all the way back to the beginning of Jay Say. And um, I think as we celebrate, um, you know, our elders, we also remember the music and the musical experiences that we all came up here. Uh, so this is The Temptations, Just My Imagination, topping the charts in April 1971. I'm gonna check on my drums. I'm gonna bring out my uh, band here and we'll start with my drummer. Now, we had that bass drum in the beginning. Here it comes. Oh yeah, up next, the mighty bassist playing eight notes at a time. Oh yeah, and of course the sultry sounds.
and Lenny on the sax, everybody. <laughs> Man, I haven't heard a live crowd in like so long. <laughs> such an honor and privilege to uh, be playing here this music for you. Thank you for being here. And of course, we're doing everything responsibly. Everybody's got a mask on right now. We're out here at, at the JSA headquarters, um, you know, doing, doing the music and of course doing the food. And uh, I wanted to do this next song. And I actually played this song just last week on a whim and did not even realize that it topped the charts in 1971. Actually, Carol King wrote this song in 1971 for herself. And um, she also shared it with a fellow musician, James Taylor, and that, um, that track uh, topped the charts, number one, around July of 1971, and it's called You Got a Friend, and I, I have the lyrics right here, so I'm kind of cheating a little bit, sorry if I'm, you know, I'm not a pro like Lauren over here, and she's like, you know. <laughs> um, but uh, this song is really powerful, and I think really important, and you all know, I just hearing about everyone delivering this food to all, um, you know, all the seniors who need it. Just know that even though we can't be there in person, you still have a friend in all of us. Every, everybody, we're all here community together, and uh, we're here to spread the love, whether or not, pandemic or not, you know, masks, we're going to wear them, and we're going to uh, continue to spread love no matter what. <laughs> so here's a You Got a Friend, a uh, Carol King song, and I uh, hope you like it. Know 
wherever I am, I'll come running, oh yeah, baby, to see you again. Winter, spring, summer, or fall, all you got to do is call, and I'll be there, yes I will, you got a friend. You grows dark and full of clouds, and that old north wind begins to blow. Keep your head together and call my name out loud. Soon you'll hear me knocking round your door you just call out my name and you know wherever i am i'll come running running baby to see you again winter spring summer or fall all you gotta do is call and i'll be there yes i will you got a friend try something different over here Take it to the bridge. Now ain't it no, ain't it good to know that you got a friend? People can be so cold. They'll hurt you and desert you and take your soul if you let them. Oh, but don't you let them. You just call out my name And you know wherever I am I'll come running, oh, running To see you again Winter, spring, summer, or fall All you gotta do is call I'll be there, yes I will, you got a friend, you got a friend, ain't it good to know, you got a friend, ain't it good to know, ain't it good to know. All right, I think I got time for one more, if that's all right. And, uh, and we're going to do a little, little chat here in just a second. And 
bring on even more special guests. So you got to stick around because I'm very proud uh, of the next musical guest coming up. But uh, you got to stay. Don't touch that dial, okay? Don't don't go YouTube surfing to some other channel right now. You got to stay on. Um, so this song, um, I think, I've been playing this song for a while, and um, I got a full disclosure. I, I I don't have Japanese heritage. I don't even have Hawaiian heritage. I'm a Filipino American, born and raised in San Diego, California, and I think just as such, it is equally, uh, if not more important, to learn about other people's cultures and to learn about the elders of, of all people because we're all connected. We're, I, I know it's cheesy. We're all in this together. And so, um, so as being an ukulele player and uh, gravitating toward this beautiful instrument, um, I, had to, I had to learn the language. I had to learn you know, what is important about the aloha spirit behind this ukulele. And um, I always go back to this song, and this is in English. I won't try my Hawaiian today. But uh, this song is in English by John Cruz, and it's called Island Style. And I was a teacher for five years, and when I, when I hung up my, uh, my teaching credentials for a bit and became a full-time musician, I traded my shoes for flip-flops, and I traded my, my, uh, my ties for aloha shirts. And I thought, I'm going to pledge to live a little bit more island style, just like the song. And I know we don't have much of a choice right now. We're in the middle of something crazy. Uh, you know, 2020 is, uh, is a year that we will hope to soon forget. <laughs> and, uh, and I wanted to say that in my tribute to the 1971, it's kind of crazy, 50 years of JC. I know it's coming up next year. You're already prepared. 50 years. It's amazing. We're... we're so uh, I know it's a little bit of an advance on, on the 50-year celebration, but we're all done with 2020. Let's be real. <laughs> we're all done with it. Um, so, um, you know, let's live a little bit more island style. Let's let life slow down a little bit. I know we live this fast-paced life that's, you know, all about the money, the fortune, the fame. But in this time, let's all bake a little more sourdough bread, make some more mochi muffins, and uh, live island style. Here's John Cruz.
sweet island style From the mountain to the ocean From the windward to the leeward side On the island We do it island style From the mountain to the ocean From the windward to the leeward side from the mountain to the ocean, from the windward to the leeward side. From the mountain to the ocean, from the windward to the leeward side. Hello, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. With our face shield. Yay, let's <laughs> give up for Ukulele. One more time. <laughs> that was so beautiful. I didn't expect to feel homesick. <laughs> I'm originally from Oahu, and so that, heart, that song is a very special song in my heart. I heard it all growing up, um, and a very nice way to honor the ukulele. But welcome back, everybody. We're so grateful to have Ukuleni here with us. That was so lovely. I know a few volunteers who are here masked in the, in the distance were jamming out and really enjoying that because I haven't heard live music in a very <laughs> long time either. So <laughs> we really appreciated that. And I'm happy to talk here with you today during very unprecedented circumstances. Um, but I'm so happy that we could bring this all together. And um, first, you know, you are like a Swiss army knife of a musician. You just keep busting out instruments left and right, which is so cool. Can you tell us a little bit about how you got into the ukulele um, and the amazing performer that you are today? Well, you know, if you can't be good at one, just play all of them. <laughs> <laughs> that way you, Something you sounds can as big. hide <laughs> behind all the other instruments. No, um, yeah, it was, uh, again, such an honor to play in front of everybody here. Um, yeah, I, I grew up playing piano, like <laughs> like every good Filipino person, every Asian piano lessons person growing up. You know, my parents just um, allowed me to have that opportunity to uh, study music early on. So I studied the piano um, and uh, moved on to the um, guitar at around 10, 10 years old once piano was not cool anymore. I think we all went through a phase. If you ever took piano lessons, we're like, you know, piano's kind of lonely. I'm just playing in front of a wall, and uh, there's no windows here, and everybody's playing outside. I'm going to put the piano down. So unfortunately, I was telling Greg here. Shout out Greg, who's running the show Yay, Greg. over here. Oh, Greg yeah. of Monk Productions, doing the DJing and the lights and the camera. It's crazy. Um, but yeah, we're talking about keyboard. And um, one of my, one of my uh, things I would like to take back in, in my career is learn the piano better because that was the foundation and then I was really excited about music still so I took the guitar up in middle school tried to get the girls and you know <laughs> like be a crooner like the gentleman who was singing earlier today I tried to be that guy you know the Bing Crosby <laughs> one you um, didn't have a tuxedo though I bet. I know you know I that probably you. Yeah. It probably would have worked <laughs> out if I wore the tuxedo but <laughs> the, I tried to play the guitar and um, 
and just stick, stuck with music all throughout school. I didn't think it would ever be a profession of mine, um, but um, you know, when I got to college, the choice was I was going to study physics or I was going to study music. And the physics classes started at 8 a.m. in the morning, and I was like, no, it's not going to be physics. <laughs> I'm done with that. So um, I studied music. I was in the marching band where I picked up the saxophone or, and um, you know, started playing sort of that type of music. I played the cello a little bit in high school. I think I just gravitated to anything that makes music, I want to play it. And the ukulele was especially a special part of that experience. In college, I picked up the uke and I was training to be a music teacher. And so I was picking up all the other instruments, trying to teach my roommates and my friends random musical stuff. <laughs> and the ukulele was by far the easiest one to teach. It would just be like, here's a uke, here's three chords. It won't even hurt you to play the uke. And we're jamming in five minutes. And um, I was sold. And then Jake Shimabukuru came out with uh, while my guitar gently weeps and Bohemian Rhapsody. I was like, oh, the ukulele can do that too? That's crazy. I started nerding out on the ukulele and started playing it on the BART train, back and forth, just practicing. And uh, here I am. There you are, <laughs> a long journey, a long yeah. musical journey. And speaking of legacy, since that's what we're here today celebrating, uh, we talked a little bit before the show about the legacy and ancestry of music and instruments and and what you personally have built uh, upon in terms of legacy to be where you are today so i'd like to ask you a little bit in honor of keiro no hi um, what are you reflecting on in terms of the elders uh, that have been in your life legacy ancestry yeah i think that's a huge part of it you know we are you know, music is such a storied history. The the greats we we have our influences that we grow up with. You know, I I listen to the Temptations and Stevie Wonder in our household. You know, I was my parents were huge music fans, and I think you asked me like, was there a musical background in our our uh, family? And they didn't play really. They played a little bit of guitar, but they were monsters on the magic mic. <laughs> they were <laughs> karaoke. Okay. Karaoke. Okay. That's right. <laughs> so it was huge in our household. So I'd be practicing these duets with my mom and my dad, <laughs> and um, and that was a big part of it. You know, we'd be performing for the uh, the Christmas program, and everybody would prepare a song and perform. So I think that legacy also kind of exists with my own parents um, just loving music. And I think mm. um, I, I kind of touched on it before, like the musical history of you know every culture is so magical in how um, it connects us all. You know, it connects us to our ancestors. Um, recently, actually, my uh, grandmother passed away last weekend and um, on my dad's side. And I just have fond memories of going back to the Philippines to visit her and um, you know, she had already lost her memory. She would actually go up to me and she would say, are, y are you Louie? Well, you know, <laughs> her son. She would say, like, are you my son, Louie? And I'm like, no, I'm his son. I'm your grandson. He's like, oh, where's Louie? Like, he's in the other room. Go talk to him. And he's like, oh. She's like, oh. And then she'd ask me the same question again, you know, in a couple of minutes. So she was already losing her memory um, back then, uh, you know, 10, 20 years ago. And, um, and yet, I would play these old songs, these Filipino songs, and she would remember every word. And that, to me, really spoke to where music, you know, lives in our lives. You know, it's, it's so present in everything we do that um, to go back in time and to reach that music and to be able to reach my grandmother through this kind of time capsule, I mean, it's magical. So, um, yeah, I think, I think it's really important that we honor the legacy of, of where music has been and where it goes, you know. Uh, I play a lot of old tunes, obviously. My repertoire today was 1971. <laughs> um, but uh, it, it really is that connection that is so vital. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I have very fond memories of music with my grandparents, and I feel like every song can be such a special tribute to a moment in our lives or memories that we have. And, you know, even just being with you here today and playing those tunes, I'm sure people recall things that they remember, or people in their lives that they remember. So I think that's why it's so special that we have music as a really big part of today's festival program. 
And now I want to ask you a little bit more about what you've been doing in this very uh, challenging year. Uh, as a live musician, performer, things certainly changed a lot for you, but you've been keeping very busy. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about what you've been up to. Yeah, I think my mantra of uh, what we've learned in the past seven months of quarantine is that art is going to art. And <laughs> I would keep saying that and to all my artist friends and creatives. And, and even those who don't find themselves to be like a creative, I'm sure you did something creative this uh, quarantine season. It's kind of wild that this is where we're at, but you know, I think my musician background and my, my kind of mindset of just putting everything together, you know, as a musician, you just, you just kind of put things together. <laughs> like, um, it's so ingrained in us to make something out of nothing that it's just like, here's the situation. Okay, let's change gears. Let's do something else. And I was doing gigs and I was performing at weddings and uh, you know, private events. I was doing restaurants every weekend. And all of a sudden, we just had to cancel everything. Um, and I know a lot of people are in this position. And, and it's a really tough time for musicians and artists because you know, everything just disappears. And what do you do? I was lucky and blessed enough that I, I kind of had an online identity. I had started the YouTube about 10 years ago. And I have kind of um, a teaching platform. I teach lessons online. And so during quarantine, once you know the lockdown orders happened, we didn't know how long it was going to be. I figured maybe three, four weeks, maybe, uh, maybe two <laughs> months, maybe three months. Those were the days. Those were right <laughs> the before times, we call them. <laughs> In the before times. Um, and, um, and so I wanted to do something that uh, you know I wanted to kind of use whatever I had to give back to the community because I knew it was going to be hard for everybody. So I just set up free lessons. Every week I would do free workshops, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, for like, I did this for five <laughs> months straight pretty much. And, um, and it was just amazing to, I, I don't know, I feel like in times like these, we just all have to, uh, you know, carry each other and lift each other up. And uh, I know there's so many people doing so much more in terms of being on the front lines and you know people in healthcare and all of our teachers who are back to school doing you know full-time virtual uh, classrooms and as a musician I, I just feel lucky that I can at least contribute this so I started teaching lessons and I'm still doing it just every Monday I'm doing a workshop every Friday we do a jam and um, it definitely keeps me busy keeps me uh, uh, it's crazy to think that before we were you know, twiddling our thumbs. What are we going to do with all this time? And now it's just all filled up. We're just <laughs> yes. doing stuff. So Tons yeah. going on. And on that same note, our next segment of special musical guests, uh, which you alluded to in your performance, um, is a special group of people, which I'd love to have you tell us more about and introduce um, for, the, for the audience. Uh, yeah, so what can we say about K, Tom, and Fuzzy? Well, these are my <laughs> friends, um, and <laughs> Tom uh, especially is kind of the big organizer in our, in our little trio or quartet. Um, Tom reached out to me at JSA, you know, at the Family Festival, maybe about three years ago. Um, he saw my performance, and he's an ukulele player, avid ukulele player, part of a, a group, I believe it's the... Uh, the strummers, what is it? Sentimental strummers, oh, thank you. The sentimental <laughs> strummers, gotta have some alliteration in there too. <laughs> um, and uh, he was just reaching out to have lessons. So first we did lessons with him and his friend Patty and we were doing duo lessons and um, she had to take a break from that. And then she, he said, I have these two friends in sentimental strummers, we wanna get together and play music. So course in the before times we would do this in person we would have lessons every other week um, and we would just practice songs and um, it was very exciting to uh, get to share my ukulele experience with them and every week they go like whoa how come nobody ever told me this or something like that I thought that was so amazing to uh, get to bring them into my music world I really gave them the music nerd skills you know <laughs> like to, to call out keys and call out patterns and stuff so we worked together for again three years and then the lockdown happened and so we transitioned to online and you know first we were trying to figure out how to work the mics on zoom so we worked on that and then <laughs> after that 
it was just so amazing to see this trio rise up to the occasion. I gave them some assignments. I said, you know what we should try to do? We should try to do one of those quarantine videos mm -hmm. where they're, everybody's in a different square and everybody's playing at the same time because that's what we need. That's what, like we just need the human interaction. It's fine if we can be on Zoom and play, but we can't even hear each other play on Zoom. Have you ever tried to sing happy birthday on Zoom at the Very same time? Very challenging. One of my Found favorite pastimes. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's singing at different time. <laughs> and so we did a couple of videos and it's just amazing. You're gonna see the work that they've put together in this in these past couple of months and I'm I couldn't be prouder of them as musicians and and as as uh, friends of the ukulele. I think uh, you know our ukulele community is really big and warm and uh, I'm excited to introduce you to Katofu, which is their name. <laughs> All right, Katofu, coming right up. Thank you so much, Ukulani.
tired and worn, I woke up this morning, found that I was confused. Spun right around and found that I lost the things that I couldn't lose. The beaches they sell to build their hotels, my father and I once knew. Birds all along, the sunlight at dawn, singing on the novel Those were some amazing performances by Ka Tofu and Ukuleni, of course. Thank you all so much for contributing your musical talents. 
And for those of you who want to see more of Ukuleni, you can visit his website at ukuleni.com. And also, he does a live streaming event every Friday for Aloha Friday on Facebook. So be sure to check those out. And this is a really good example of how we can all still stay connected online. And the JSA has a variety of online classes that you can take advantage of from Ikebana, Japanese language, strength and balance, Tai Chi, so many great offerings. So be sure to check out the JSA website or for more information, you can contact education coordinator Jill Shiraki at Jill, J-I-L-L, at j-sei.org via email. And now, our final musical segment of today's family festival. I'm very pleased to uh, present some heartwarming numbers uh, in an intergenerational choir, from an intergenerational choir, featuring students from Daruma no Gakko, which is a wonderful program that teaches kids about Japanese, heri Japanese American heritage and culture over the summer. And the choir also features some fabulous JSA seniors. These songs that they're about to sing have been passed down, uh, passed down for generations. So I'm sure that a lot of you know them. So please feel free to sing along. I love doing kendo. I love making Japanese fortune tellers. I love singing Japanese songs. I learned all about Japanese history at Dadumanogaku. I love seeing my friends. I love assisting and helping all the kids at Dadumanogaku. I love learning to make tofu. I love making bento boxes. I love making a Dadumanogaku. Dadumanogaku has been around for over 40 years. In our Nikkei summer program, it's been our primary mission to provide our students with a strong sense of positive self-image associated with their Nikkei roots, and also educate them about their Nikkei heritage. During this pandemic, for the first time in our operations, we've had to close our traditional programming, but our annual operating costs still remain. And with much uncertainty about how next summer will be unfolding, we're asking the greater community to consider joining with us to help keep our current programming going for future generations. If you would consider supporting us now, please go to our website and click under fundraising. We appreciate any help that you can lend us. Domo arigato gozaimasu. Hello, and thank you to everyone for joining us today. My name is Akiko Takashima, a co-director of the Nikkei Summer Program, Darumanogakko. Our summer program has been around for over 40 years, and we are very happy to have one of our founding mothers, Emiko Katsumoto, with us today. She has been one of the lead coordinators in helping to create this musical sing-along program. Emiko-san has been working with both our students as a former music teacher within our program and also with the JSA singers. With that, I will turn it over to Emiko-san to give you a brief intro of the songs that you will be hearing. I have always loved Japanese music and especially Japanese children's songs. I, I feel very privileged to have been able to teach at Dharma for 15 years until I retired last year. For the last few years, uh, Carol Neuberger and I have been leading sing sessions with JSA singers and um, for this we're very grateful to Diane Wong and to Jill Shaki for making this possible. Um, so I have the continued joy of being able to sing with our senior singers and I just love to hear their enthusiastic voices twice a month when we get together on Zoom. So it's been a great great adventure and fun and uh, very gratifying to sing with the Dadama students on this presentation and um, we've uh, it's been a great collaborative and um, intergenerational project and it's really been very fulfilling. I want to thank Akiko Takashima and Andrea Maoki for making this possible. They have all the technical know-how to make this happen. 
So we will sing two songs tonight. The first song is Dadama Sang, which is the school's theme song, and it's traditionally sung um, at the end of the term for its Gaku Geikai program. The second is Shiawase Narateo Tatako, which is in English if you're happy and you know it. So that's been a real fun song to do with the kids, and uh, we do hand motions too. So um, we hope you'll enjoy this presentation. That was so cute. I love it. Um, thank you so much for this to the students at Daruma no Gakko and the seniors who participated uh, and our choir instructor. That was really nice and hope you'll continue to keep singing or that that inspires you to keep singing with your family members. That concludes our program of the JSA Family Festival. Thank you so much for tuning in and joining us for this first time online uh, festival and I hope it helped remind you how important it is to keep our elders close, treasure them, and reach out to them. They'd love to hear from you, a phone call, a card, and for those who have passed on, it's a great time to reflect. I know I'm thinking of my grandparents and how much they enriched my life. Uh, we have so many people to thank, but before I do that, I want to remind everyone that next year is our 50-year celebration of JSA. It's a really exciting milestone and there's gonna be a lot going on. So please keep in touch through the website and sign, make sure you're signed up for the newsletter. Um, we're really excited to celebrate that amazing achievement. So yes, I do want to thank 
Jill Shiraki, Carol Doy for producing this two-day festival and making it so special and bringing us all together despite the, <laughs> the challenges that we're all facing. I want to thank Greg Valoria of Monks Media Monks Works. Monks Media Works, I'm sorry, Greg. He's behind the scenes, manning cameras, computers, lights, as Lenny said, and done a tremendous job putting this all together. So thank you. And of course, Yuji Ishitaka, who recruited all of the local chefs for our bentos today, who, that were delicious and people I see are still enjoying. So thank you. And of course, all of the performers, ukuleni out there, um, everyone who chipped in to send in their videos and uh, it's been a truly special event so thank you so much and especially to all of our community elders Okage Samade, we are who we are because of you. We thank you so much for everything that you have done, for charting the path forward, for passing down knowledge and traditions that are so special to us to this day. We truly appreciate you and we honor you today. So thank you again. Until next time, ogenki de and sayonara.